my privilege to extend a laurel and hearty handshake to our new nigger. These folks don't have the most progressive views on race. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 worst movie racists. No, sir, I, I'm not prejudiced. For this list, we're looking at unabashed, big-screen bigots whose prejudice is central to their character. It doesn't matter whether they're heroes or villains, as long as they discriminate against at least one group of people. You gold teeth, gold chain wearing, fried chicken and biscuit eating monkey. But we are excluding characters that are satirical in nature or based on historical figures, which means you won't be seeing Borat, George Wallace, and how does that happen? Amon Gut or Adolf Hitler on this list. This video also contains explicit content and spoilers. Consider yourself warned. I have some respect, Zipperhead. We're in mourning here. Number 10, Buck Grotowski. Monsters Ball. It's a time when they knew their place. Wasn't none of this mixing going on. A retired Georgia prison guard obsessed with power. Buck looks back fondly at the good old days when blacks were second class citizens. Damn porch monkey. He passes his racial resentment onto his son Hank and makes him go outside to run African American children off of their property with a shotgun. Well, what are you standing for? Buck's insensitive comments and racism are so strong that they almost lead to the end of Hank's subsequent interracial relationship with Leticia. In my prime, I had a thing for the juice myself. Hank just like his daddy. He ain't a man till he split dark oak. Number nine, Remy, higher learning. In this romantic drama, Remy starts off as a low-key college student. However, following several severely racially charged incidents, neo-Nazis from off-campus take him under their wing and convince him white people have to stick together. It's that shirt, man. You support the Black Panthers? Yeah, and? It's reverse racism, man. Wanting to be accepted by his new peers, Remy is eventually talked into shooting up his fellow students for their cause. Which one of you would have the balls to shoot? I would. His transformation into a rabid skinhead is a disturbing example of how hate groups can act as a haven for troubled outsiders. <laughs> Number eight, Hilly Hallbrook, The Help. Ugh, it's just plain dangerous. They carry different diseases than we do. An affluent member of the Jackson, Mississippi community, Hilly has little regard for most people, but especially African Americans. If Abilene uses the guest bath, I'm sure she uses yours too. Believing black people to be diseased, she pushes for a law requiring black maids to use separate bathrooms in white homes. Wouldn't you rather them take their business outside? When the maids in Jackson begin to speak out against their mistreatment, Hilly threatens to falsely accuse them of theft to silence them. She's trying to blame it on a toddler. I ain't got no silver. She says she doesn't have them. And it behooves me to inform you that you are fired, Abilene. The reward for her misdeeds? Keeping helping of the terrible awful. All you do is scan lie to try to get what you want. Abilene, stop. You are godless woman. Ain't you tired, Miss Hilly? Number seven, Police Chief Bill Gillespie, in the heat of the night. Got a name, boy? Virgil Tibbs. Virgil. <laughs> in this mystery drama, a small town Mississippi police chief is forced to work with a Philadelphia detective to investigate a murder. All right, now steady. You finished. At first, Bill Gillespie feels threatened by the fact that his African-American partner is smarter and more perceptive than he is. What do you want me to do? You want me to beg you? Is that what you're after? Look, I've had your town up to here. Boy, it would give me a world of satisfaction to horsewhip you, Virgil. But as the case drags on, Gillespie learns to respect his partner Virgil Tips, played by Sidney Poitier, for his excellent sleuthing skills. Ammonium. Hydrosulfide, benzidine, superoxide of hydrogen. Ron Steger would go on to win an Academy Award for his role as the gum-chewing, blustering cop, while In the Heat of the Night became an instant hit. I don't think that you could let an opportunity like that pass by. Number six, Robert E. Lee Bob Ewell, To Kill a Mockingbird. I'm real sorry they picked you to defend that that raped my mayella. In this famous adaptation of Harper Lee's novel, the patriarch of the Ewell clan erroneously accuses an African-American of raping his daughter. 
he believes that blacks are troublesome aggressors, and even openly regrets not killing the defendant outright. I don't know why I didn't kill him myself instead of going to the sheriff. While holding a grudge against lawyer Atticus Finch for defending the black man. What kind of man are you? You will resort to intimidation tactics, confronting Finch outside of the courtroom and harassing his children. Spiteful and vindictive, you will represent the very worst of Depression era Alabama society. I'm a God fearing man. Number five, Walt Kowalski, Gran Torino. How many swamp rats can you get in one room? This gruff former assembly line worker isn't afraid to tell you what's on his mind, and he certainly knows his way around a joke. There's a Mexican, a Jew, and a colored guy go into a bar. The bartender looks up and says, Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> In fact, Walt has something to say about pretty much everyone, including the Italians and the Irish. But his favorite target is Asians. Possibly, and we mean definitely, because of his experience in the Korean War. Who are you? Hi. What do you want? I live next door. Come on, get the shit out of your mouth. Tell I, me um, what you want. He opens up to a Hmong family after developing a relationship with a young man living next door. I don't care if you insult me or say racist things. Because you know what? I'll take it. Yeah, of course you'll take it. Because you have no teeth, you have no balls, kid. Walt may eventually broaden his horizons, but that doesn't mean he keeps his mouth shut. I'm not a good man. Get me another beer, dragon lady. This one's empty. Number four, Andrew Combo Gascoigne. This is England. This dude here spent three years in the pen for me, never said nothing. Now we must travel across the pond to check out some British bigotry. This fucking wog, right? Proper horrible. Sorry, mate. Sorry. Didn't mean not to buy. A white nationalist. Combo feels his country has betrayed the working class with its lax immigration policies. 2,000 years, this little tiny fucking island has been raped and pillaged by people who have come here and wanted a piece of it. He and his gang of skinheads take out their frustrations on minorities, terrorizing them in the streets and in their shops. Get your fucking hands off him now! Fucking hands off him! Take what you want, kid. Take the fucking whiskey and the ciggies. Oi! Oh, yeah! We really see the extent of Combo's sociopathic tendencies, though, when he discovers his mixed race friend didn't also have a dysfunctional upbringing. We have to come round to my grandma's to get something to eat. Yeah, yeah man. As the ensuing jealousy that arises within him causes Combo to beat Milky unconscious. <laughs> Number three, Calvin J. Candy, Django Unchained. Well, come on over. We got us a fight going on that's a good bit of fun. This slave owner's plantation is one candy land you don't want to visit. When I paid five hundred dollars, I expect to get five fights out of <laughs> before he roll over and play dead. Calvin Candy forces his slaves to fight to the death when he's not feeding them to the dogs. <laughs> and he justifies his domineering treatment of blacks by invoking the discredited science of phrenology. That's what Bob I did. Counting on the support of his faithful servant Stephen, Candy is the only villain created by Quentin Tarantino that the director has gone on record saying he truly despises. And when you watch the film, you completely get why. No! Ah! To the man with the exceptional beard and his unexceptional n***a. Number two, Sal, do the right thing. You're gonna pay now, you're gonna pay on layaway. How much? You've been coming in here at least three times a day. What are you, a retard? With the help of his two grown sons, Sal runs a pizzeria in a black neighborhood in Brooklyn. His wall of fame, featuring pictures of Italian-American icons, is a source of ethnic pride, reminding his customers of his culture superiority. Hey, hey, Sal, how come we got the brothers on a wall here? You want brothers on a wall? Get your own place. You can do what you want to do. Although Sal mostly gets along with his African-American patrons. But this is my pizzeria. American Italians on a wall only. He loses his patience during one particularly heated exchange, and this is when we see him truly let his real feelings show. Who's coming in here looking for trouble, huh? Suppose I busted your head, how would you... Before we unveil our top pip, here are a few honorable mentions. You gotta see who you are. You're black, you're not white. You're her and she's you. Well then, who am I looking at? And who's the good guys? We're the good guys. Who's gonna help you? Nobody. So who's gonna help? We're gonna help ourselves. And who do we not want to help us? White, White people. people. That's right. Who do you think you is? You can't cuss nobody. Look at you. You 
black, you're poor, you're ugly, you're a woman, you're nothing at all. That's not the vehicle, John. The plates don't match, the driver's got to be 40, and nobody jacks the car and takes it to Studio City. They were doing something. Number one, Derek Vineyard, American History X. I think he's a jungle bunny. He does a spin move every time, every time. It's not clear whether Derek becomes a white supremacist because of his father's murder by African Americans or because of his father's dinner table discussions. Maybe a little from column A, a little from column B. No bitching, no fighting. Right here in front of everybody, you pack up your shit and get your black asses out of here. Regardless, it's revealed through flashbacks that he eventually becomes the charismatic leader of a white supremacist gang and rallies impressionable minds against immigrants and other minorities. <laughs> to him, these groups are parasites leeching off the American dream. Among his exploits, he raids a supermarket he suspects of hiring undocumented workers and kills two black people who are trying to rob him. The brutal fashion in which he kills one of these thieves in particular is sure to haunt the viewer for days, weeks, maybe years. Now say goodnight! Do you agree with our list? Who do you think was the most racist film character of all? The hell he spooks up to. Spooks? <laughs> you better get your ass on, hunky, while I still let you. For more thought-provoking top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo. Com. The next record goes out to Radio Raheem. We love you, brother.